Welcome back into the GSMC Sports Podcast for our final segment of the day where I want to take a look now with the U.S. men's team winning yet another gold medal. I want to look ahead to the 2028 games and talk about what we could see from that roster because this was obviously the sort of final swan song series of LeBron James, Steph Curry, and possibly Kevin Durant, who could still technically, I think KD specifically, could be in play for that 2028 team, but definitely, you know, at that point, he's going to be 39 years old. You're asking a lot of him at that stage. It's at least taking place in the United States, which might actually be easier for some of the veteran guys. But I want to sort of look at what the Team USA roster construction looked like this year and use that as a little bit of a framework to look towards 2028. So you look at this year. I am, by the way, in this considering Anthony Edwards a forward. If you want to consider him a guard, then, you know, so be it. But it was... Five guards, four forwards, and three bigs this past year. Now, we've talked before about the players that could return for 2028. I think that from the guard perspective, Devin Booker and Tyrese Halliburton should 100% be in play for the 2028 games. Now, Halliburton didn't get all that much running run time in the, this year's games, and he was dealing with an injury as well. The whole second half of the injury he was sort of bothered with injuries as well. So, you know, wasn't fully healthy, but is somebody who, you know, at this point a few years from now, the U.S. is going to need ball handlers. And Tyrese Halliburton, my issue is more with him sometimes is the hesitancy to attack offensively for himself but he is an unbelievable passer and playmaker and I do think that he could definitely be sort of the lead point guard from for Team USA in 2028 especially with a few extra years of experience under his belt so I'm definitely putting stock in that for the forwards I think Jason Tatum and Anthony Edwards are pretty clear players to run it back like I mentioned Kevin Durant could be in that conversation if he's you know still healthy and active enough at that point but I do think that you know in a perfect world yes Kevin Durant would be on this roster I'm gonna exclude him because frankly I just don't expect that he's going to be at the level physically somebody who's been dealing with a number of different injuries over these past few years that I don't think he's going to be ready for the 28 games, but something I'm rooting for as well because, you know, it would be fun to see him win five gold medals, but something I'm sort of ruling out there. Um, and then for the bigs, I think that Anthony Davis and Bam Adebayo both do have a pretty real chance to come back. Davis, the concern would be what if he suffers some injuries over the course of the next couple years, but... I do think that as long as he's fully healthy, he should be an incredible fit there. So I actually want to start by building out the rest of the roster because I just named six players there from last year's team that I'm putting on this 2028 squad, which leads six extra spots. I think the big man position is very important because one of the names that I did not include was Joel Embiid. He sounds he seems like he is very interested in playing for Cameroon in 2028. Wasn't a great fit necessarily for him at all times with the US this year. So I have Embiid playing for Cameroon in 2028. So he's going to be overseas. Nikola Jokic is going to be overseas. Giannis is Wemby is, DeMontis Sabonis could be as well. So it's a number of different bigs to be matching up with. You know, I mentioned Wemby as well. You know, if Alex Saar ends up panning into the his full potential of what he could be offensively, I mean, those are two seven-foot offensive threats. So I think the U.S. is going to need at least three bigs, and there are four that I really think are on the table and that I would be putting on this roster. Anthony Davis, 
and Bam. Along with that, Jaron Jackson Jr. and Chet Holmgren are both real options for being able to guard the guard the paint, be switchable on the outside, and then offensively as well, be able to play out on the perimeter and be at least somewhat of a lob threat. Bam would probably be more of the interior force, but I think with all four of these guys, Anthony Davis, Jaron Jackson Jr., Chet Holmgren, and Bam Adebayo, they could all sort of play in two big lineups anyways. We saw Steve Kerr and his, you know, commitment to the Anthony Davis, Bam Adebayo lineups this year. I think that size is always going to be a positive thing. And if the U.S. can stock up on bigs that are versatile, I think that that is very much on the table. So if you include that, we are now at eight players for 12 spots, which would mean that we are trying to fill out the rest of the roster with, you know, forwards and guards. And I think that the number one name that is sort of on the more experienced end, and I definitely think is going to have an opportunity to get the nod based off of a little bit what happened this past year as well, is Jalen Brown, where at this point, you know, he will be in his early 30s, still on his Supermax contract. Jalen Brown has gotten better every single season of his career. He's shown his ability to develop as an off-ball, not just an off-ball offensive player, but additionally as well, you know, take on a bigger role defensively and be able to improve there to the point where he's playing very mi meaningful minutes you know, on the, you know, on some of the best defenders in the world for um, the Celtics this past year. So I would give him the nod in this case. And then additionally, I think that Paolo Bancaro would be a great matchup as well. Grant Hill, I think it was Grant Hill actually just talked about as well that, you know, Paolo was in consideration for Team USA this year. And I don't think that they're going to pass up on him twice, where he is far too good of a player. The work ethic with him, he is able to, you know, be a, a force offensively and with his size and everything way bigger than people realize could definitely be a helpful as well. Rebounding wise, um, I don't know how great he would be as an off ball scorer, which would be sort of the knock on Paolo for this type of a role, but I still feel like he gets the nod. He was one of the best players. I think it was when he was on the World Cup team that I think he has a little bit of international experience, and I think that he would get the nod there. So up to this point, we have Halliburton, Booker, Tatum, Brown, Anthony Edwards, Paolo Bancaro, AD, Jaron Jackson Jr., Chet Holmgren, and Bam, which would leave two roster spots left. And then from that point, you have four forwards and you have four bigs. You probably need a little bit of extra help with guards. Now, I will say, I think that Tatum and Brown can, or, or Tatum and Ant can both be on the ball players that do take on some sort of guard-ish roles. Like Jason Tatum, that's almost why the fit wasn't great for him in, in this year's games because of the fact that he had sort of developed to be the offensive hub a little bit more for the Celtics. The off-the-ball shooting has taken a hit over the past couple years. So I do think that Tatum can be a little bit of a point-forward role. And Ant, I mean, Ant's listed as a guard on the Team USA roster anyways, as things currently stand. So again, a little interchangeable where you would want to throw him into the mix there. I think it would be one other guard that you would throw into the mix for Team USA and then go back to having some length with a wing. Now the guard position, a few names come to mind. Jalen Brunson was one of the players talked about most for this year's circuit of him getting the nod. I think that Ja Morant could definitely get some runway as well. Donovan Mitchell, one of the best pure scorers in the game. 
I actually kind of feel like the nod, and in this case, I would go with Cade Cunningham because I think a few years from now he is going to continue to evolve. He's a great scorer. He's a great passer. He can play defense. He just plays for the Detroit Pistons. So he never gets credit for any of his skills, but he is a player still just, what, 21, 22 years old that in a few years from now, I think that he is going to, you know, really be one of the best players in the NBA, can give you point guard play from a forward size. So I would give the na the nod to Cade, and then I'd probably go back to the forward position where I think there are a number of very intriguing options. The ones that I'm really closing in on, this could definitely be a Kevin Durant spot, so we'll keep that in mind, I suppose. But the other ones out there for them, I think that Scotty Barnes, Jalen Williams, Brandon Miller, and Cooper Flagg are all really enticing names for players that could end up getting minutes. And at this point, with how deep of a roster we're talking about, I kind of feel like this would be a Cooper Flag spot where it's almost they're going to go either with a little bit of a legacy spot for Kevin Durant or on the other end, kind of like what they just did with Tyrese Halliburton, take the young guy, let him get this experience and see what it's like to, you know, be in that mode so that a few, you know, four years from then at that point, 2032, that the U.S. would, you know, be in prime position. That being said, you know, I've only watched so much Cooper Flag, so if I'm being maybe a little bit more authentic to... I, I think that Flag is going to become a star player, so I'm, I'm putting him in this conversation. If I were going to exclude that for... recuse myself of, you know, going with a player that... I haven't even seen get any college action, let alone NBA. I'd probably lean in the direction of Jalen Williams, just somebody who can bring you energy on both sides of the floor, be a very nice scorer, and be somebody that uh, maybe saying that he's not afraid isn't exactly great timing because and it's, I don't think it was that he was afraid, but I think the moment looked a little big for him maybe when things tightened up in the... Uh, conference semifinals versus Dallas, but I still feel like he has a very bright future. He's going to continue to improve, and you know, some Thunder fans want to throw him into top 25 conversations already. I don't know if I'm willing to go there just yet, but I do think that the future is very bright for him. So, final roster here, guards Tyrese Halliburton, Devin Booker, Cade Cunningham, Forwards, Jason Tatum, Anthony Edwards, Jalen Brown, Paolo Bancaro, and Cooper Flagg. And then Biggs, Anthony Davis, Jaron Jackson Jr., Chet Holmgren, and Bam Adebayo. Definitely leaning with size with the construction of this roster, but let me know what you would do differently in the comments section. But that is all the time we have for today. Thank you very much for tuning into the GSMC Sports Podcast. Thank you to the GSMC Sports Network for allowing us to host this show. Remember to like, follow, subscribe wherever you keep up with us. Uh, be sure to check us out on social media as well for more exclusive short content. And we will be back same time as always tomorrow afternoon at 2 o'clock p.m. Eastern. We will see you then. Take care. <laughs> Let's go. I wake up to a little bit of drool on my pillow, feel like it's gonna be a bad day. Yeah, I'm tired of shit, and the coffee ain't hit yet.